lovelies. I just wanted to pop on for a quick impromptu bookshelf tour. Um, I wanted to tell y'all about this book right here. This is The Jackal of Nar by John Marco. This is actually the only author I have written a fan letter to. So uh, this is a military fantasy. It's from the 90s, I think. Uh, it's a part of a trilogy, but um, I like read it on planes going to visit my mom, uh, my grandmother, sorry. And it follows this one character. I really like the fact that the main character in it isn't um, this idealized paragon, like in the context of the story, he makes a lot of mistakes that end up having very serious consequences, but he still tries to do the right thing. And <laughs> I, I just admired that about a character. But uh, it was the first time I'd read a book where the main character does things that are morally bad, but like he still tries to be a good person. And so this one in particular meant a lot to me. I, I really love it. I think there are some problematic things in it, but overall, like I appreciate this as the art it is. And I really love it. It's the, the Jackal of Nar by John Marco, as I was saying. So this is one of my like secret favorites. Um, I, I have read it. Like, I love it so much, but, um, and I have another book by the author around here somewhere. Um, here it is. This is another one of his books. This is not in the series. This is like the third book in this series. This is the third book in this series. It's the first one is the eyes of God. The second one is the devil's armor. And this is the sword of angels. This is the third book in the trilogy also by John Marco. Um, this one is a little more jaded, like there's a similar premise to this book. This is kind of like a Guinevere and Lancelot retelling, but the from Lancelot's perspective and how things go wrong as a result of the knight falling in love with the queen and his affair with the queen. And so it's it's like that that whole thing, that whole debacle in Arthurian lore just gets taken to like the nth degree. And I the thing I did appreciate about uh, the thing I did appreciate about this one, even though it's a bit more jaded than the other one I showed, the Jackal of Nar, uh, this one, uh, it shows the things, the bad things that happen are the result of the character's own actions. So it's the concept of, yes, bad things happen, but like, dude, you, 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 you hooked up with your best friend's wife. Like, what did you expect to happen? Like, of course the world was going to end. Um, so I appreciated that about this book, that it wasn't just like, for no reason, it was like the main character had an active part that he played in his ultimate destiny. Uh, so that's that's one that's an also by John Marco. He's kind of a, a lesser known author, I think. But like whenever I mention him, like some people have heard of John Marco, and so I I think he is underrated. But some people do know who he is. Um, <clears throat> this is one that I have that is not fantasy, but uh, this is Wolf Hall by Hilary Mantel. And the, um, the character of Cromwell, her characterization of Cromwell in this, it's like the story of the rise. This book is um, the, the rise and fall of Anne Boleyn from the perspective of Henry VIII's lawyer, Thomas Cromwell. And Thomas Cromwell um, is kind of a morally gray character in history. Like you think he did some bad, he did some bad things, but like he also did some good things that we still have to thank him for. And so um, this led to me doing a lot of research into Cromwell, the man himself in history. And uh, the, Thomas, uh, he, Thomas Cromwell inspired a character, a very prominent character in Dangerous Assassin, who, who has the same name, which is not a coincidence at all. Like Cromwell, it, it, it's pretty obvious. It's in book one. Um, but then we have one, my favorite, uh, one of my favorite books of all time, if not my favorite book, that I have read is uh, An Acceptable Time by Madeline Lengel. This one, um, I can't, this, uh, this series, The Time Quintet, the first book in this series is The Wrinkle of Time. Most people know that, but not many people know that The Wrinkle of Time is actually a series. So An Acceptable Time by Madeline Lengel is the story of Meg, uh, in, who gets introduced in The Wrinkle of Time. It's about Meg's daughter who goes to stay with her grandparents and discovers that there's a portal in the woods that leads to a prehistoric, like, it is prehistoric. I think it is prehistoric. It's, like, vaguely, 
defined, but um, a time period where there are um, druids who've come to the new world. And so they're there with this native tribe and it's, um, she gets caught up in the machinations and intertribal warfare. So I, it, but it's, this is a very sweet book. It's a very gentle book. It's, um, it has a bittersweet ending, but it has, I love the way Madeline Lengel thought about people and how gentle she was towards people and towards her characters and like really sad things happen. Like I said, this is a bittersweet ending, but how optimistic she was ultimately. So I, I love Madeline Lengel's stuff. This is like one of, this is possibly my favorite book of all time. It's fantasy, but it's not like the high fantasy I usually read. So it's it's a little incongruous in that regard, but it, it is still one of my absolute favorites. Um, <clears throat> and uh, these are books that I got on my honeymoon, actually. Um, these are first editions of Passage to Dawn and Siege of Darkness by R.A. Salvatore. So I have... I am like 17 books in, I think, reading this series. There's like 32 books in it now. Um, but I have read like 32. Uh, I'm sorry, there are 32 books. I have not read that many of them yet. But these are first editions of that series. They're like five and six in that series, I think. But um, very important. Like they, I, Like when I found them, I was like, I was telling my husband, I was like, I need to have these as souvenirs from our honeymoon. And he was like, sure, babe, whatever you want. So um, another book on here that is very special to me, but that I still need to actually read is uh, Blood Remnant, which is by my friend Gabriel L. Chen. Gabriel Chen, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Gabriel is a fantastic person, fantastic writer. And I would have definitely read this if it weren't for the fact that I just have most of the books I read now are audiobooks, so that's the only reason I haven't read this, but um, I love Gabriel as a person, and I'm just, I'm very excited to read this book. It's been translated from the original Chinese, and it's just, he's, he's an amazing mind, an amazing person. Um, Palette, uh, Blood Remnant is the name of this one. Uh, <clears throat> so then, uh, I'm trying to find, I'm trying to keep it on books I have read, because there are some books on here that I have not read. Uh, let's see real quick. What else have I read? Oh, here's one that book, here's one that book talk knows. Here's one. Uh, the Cruel Prince. Like I just now finally caved last year and read this and I absolutely love this series. <laughs> I read it in audiobook, but I still like bought the books because I just, I wanted to own them and have them on my shelf. Um, I just I was blown away by Holly Black and I, I, I think I think she is hyped up a lot and I still think she's underrated like I think she should be one of the top authors in America honestly it just just I there's so many layers I could fangirl over this book for so long I'm just <laughs> oh my gosh I love this book so much um, I also have the Wicked King here I do not have the Queen of Nothing yet so sadly uh, <clears throat> I need to fix that definitely Here's another book by a friend of mine, Jennifer Ann Davis. Uh, she writes like at the PG level. Um, this is Sword of Rage. This, um, this book is very interesting to me because it handles a lot of very dark topics. So um, the main character in this is a woman who's in a abusive marriage and <clears throat> she witnesses the death of her whole family and then gets rescued by this assassin who's like um, of questionable moral character and they develop a romance and they have a love story. But, uh, and he actually starts training her how to be an assassin as well. So I, but uh, the fact is, is that it's like this book covers very dark and heavy topics and like there is some sexual content as well, but there the way she writes about it is in a very PG way. So if you want to read something that's like new adult, but like has a PG, almost middle grade content rating, this one, um, Jennifer Ann Davis, I would recommend. I also really, uh, Jennifer Ann Davis <clears throat> also wrote this book. So uh, this is Cage of Deceit by Jennifer Ann Davis. I really love this series. Um, it Book two is where it's at, y'all. Okay, so this is book one. This is Cage of Deceit. Cage of Deceit is good. 
<laughs> the last two books in this trilogy are absolutely fantastic. Like that's when that's when you meet another character, and I'm just I, I'm so into that character. I love that character so much, but I can't tell you anything about it without spoiling it. So, um, Cage of Deceit by Jennifer Ann Davis. <clears throat> And then uh, we do, of course, I have my books here. I have two of my books. This is my one of mine, Dangerous Assassin. This is the first in my fantasy romance, Enemies to Lovers series. This uh, book was, I wrote the first draft of this book as a gift to myself for my 18th birthday. And I did nothing with it. Uh, no, 17th birthday. My 17th birthday. And then I did absolutely nothing with it. And I just left that draft on my computer. And then I read, wrote five more books, uh, four more books in the series. There's five books in this series total, but um, they didn't do anything. And I finished writing, um, I finished writing the Argotalum Saga and I wrote like eight books, nine books in the Ansadi series and did nothing with Dangerous Assassin. And then I came back to it and now I have published two books in the Dangerous Assassin series. So we have Dangerous Assassin and dangerous outlaw um but <clears throat> and now book three is about to come out so um this book has been over 10 years in the making well 10 years sorry i absolutely love this series the series is very important to me and to my heart it the dangerous assassin is actually based on um the concepts for it where it's based for my struggles with ptsd and some of the things i went through with mental illness um, so that's where the idea for the curse, um, both of the curses in this, both the main characters are cursed. So both of those curses are based on my experiences with PTSD and depression. So um, I hope y'all enjoyed this small look into my bookshelves and I will talk to y'all later. Thank you so much for joining me and I've had a lot of fun and I hope you have too.